So today we're off to the Scottish lowlands and we're going to be discovering all things Glen Kinchy. And wine is something that was very, as a subject, was very close to my heart. So I actually quite spent some time in, in, in France knowing about you know nuances of wines. Cats or dogs favoured? Uh, I tend to love dogs, although they don't love me, but dogs for sure. <laughs> And so I've been to Edinburgh a couple of times. Uh, one of my favorite cities in the world, you know. It's a lot of history and heritage from this region called Lowlands. A lot of histories are actually also known as Lowland Ladies. So Glen Kinsey was one of the first Diageo classic malls, right? So even if you're not drinking whiskey in the early evening and you want to have a tram, you be a tram of, of a very lighter style whiskey, I think Glen Kinsey fits as an aperitif malt. It's the combination of these two amazing whiskies, which is Glen Kinsey and Cameron Bray and you get something which is very interesting these days in the market it's called Johnny Walker uh, Origin Series which is a Roland edition Hey everyone welcome back to the Discover series with the Whiskey Advisor I am Uday Balaji so today we're off to the Scottish Lowlands and we're going to be discovering all things Glen Kinchy with Diageo brand ambassador Ajay Nair Hey Ajay how are you doing welcome to the series I'm great today. How how have you been? It's it's pleasure to be on your show. I've been very very well, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. And before we dive into uh, Glen Kinchy, I just like to ask all of you to please uh, like, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you know every time we have a new video in the series. So Ajay, great to have you. Uh, what do you have in your glass today? I have Glen Kinchy, 12 years old. That's that's ah. a full aperitif style whiskey that I'm drinking this. Afternoon. Same here. Yeah, likewise, same here. Glen Kinchy to All right, without further ado, Slanja. Cheers. Slanjava. Slanjava. So, Ajay, you've had a really long uh, career, both in hospitality and in beverages, I see. You've worked with almost all the major uh, hotel brands in India, and now you're working with some really, really powerhouse uh, Scotch whiskey brands. How did this all uh, come to be? So, I'm always keen, you know, on on uh, getting trained myself on beverages. And actually, I started working as, as a partner in Taj Hotel in Delhi. And I moved on into learning from alcohol, specifically wines. And wines was something that was very, as a subject, was very close to my heart. So I actually quite spent some time in, in, in France knowing about you know nuances of wines. I came back to India and started working with a company called Talio. And that's how it all started. And beverages, even from tea to coffee, I think all of them have been very close to my heart. Oh, wonderful. So uh, you're a sommelier as well then? Uh, not not familiar, but yes, uh, a wine enthusiast and and obviously a a fine dine uh, fine wine lover. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, when we do something a little fun, are you ready for a rapid fire round? Absolutely, bring it on. <laughs> All right. What is your first whiskey? Uh, I I do remember drinking Vat sixty nine with some close group of friends. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, wanted to buy this bottle of this amazing scotch whiskey, which we always thought that you know it's a whiskey that we want to drink in a, in a, during our farewell so so at 69 closest memory oh wonderful what's your favorite bar in india uh in delhi i would say sidecar is my favorite bar and uh, it's done by young diploma and such a great place not only the bar but i think the institution where not only you drink cocktails but you experience cocktail and cocktail culture in delhi so sidecar anytime Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite bars as well. Uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, Indian food is, is very close to my heart. I, I like something coming from the south of India. So Chetinad mm -hmm. is, is something that I, I relish the most and I love it. Okay. And some Kerala food as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite sport? Uh, cricket. Uh, coming from north of India and you know cricket is something that we have been playing in our gullies. So cricket by far is my closest, you know, sport that I love the most. Mm -hmm. That's something that I'm missing playing in this lockdown, you know. Yeah. So is it uh, cats or dogs for you, Ajay? Uh, I tend to love dogs, although they don't love me, but dogs for sure. <laughs> uh, 
books or music uh actually both combination of both and this time when i'm at home you know not doing something much so very close to the books reading lot of you know whiskey books at the moment and mm-hmm. currently called water of life uh, from oh. uh, chap beaches or mountains uh beaches for sure wonderful coffee or tea uh, actually tea uh, you know in india when 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 as soon as we wake up tea is something that that comes to the table the first and then the whiskey in the evening so tea for <laughs> sure <laughs> uh, so is it batman or superman for you actually superman oh you are the first person to say superman sir yeah superman <laughs> wonderful uh, just to close out what's your favorite whiskey memory aj uh my favorite whiskey memory was was drinking talisker when i was at talisker distillery and you know they say is that made by the sea and bring by the sea so i think mm-hmm. having aspiration always in 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 my dream and and that was the best memory that i could ever recall by drinking whiskey made by the sea and and again sitting again by the sea so talisker uh, is is by far my best or most loved whiskey and and the experience that i had was was completely memorable mm-hmm. uh to be perfectly honest one of my favorite uh, whiskey and and travel memories was going to the isle of sky and obviously talisker is at uh, the very heart of it uh but like you guys as i mentioned earlier so this is the first time that uh, we've had a lowland whiskey on uh, the discover series so right. before we jump into glen kinchy could you just tell us a little bit about the lowland region and its history aj so so no when we talk about highlands we typically talk about up north of scotland mm-hmm. and as down south we actually talk about lowlands and something which is very close to the england border right right to not normally the border of england is actually lowlands and uh, the whiskies whiskies have lot of history and heritage from this region called lowlands and a lot of whiskies are actually also known as lowland ladies so mm-hmm. so, so quite an interesting region uh, one of the famous poet once said that this is the garden of scotland it they have two rivers called the forth and the clyde and east part of scotland east part of uh, the edinburgh which is which is the lowland is basically uh, you have edinburgh and on the west you have the glasgow and lowland is also one of the largest producer of whiskey in scotland by volume because lot of your grains mm-hmm. are actually located there and if i talk about historically you know friar john also did this distilling in in 1494 in this in lowland for uh, for the king kings uh, king john fourth so quite quite historical region uh, quite lush green gardens uh, they have a beautiful hills there lamour hills which is surrounding the entire uh, lowland so so historically as as a region it's quite quite popular it's actually very interesting you know because uh, gen- looking at the number of malt distilleries uh, people would generally think that okay there's only a very little bit of scotch that's produced in the south but you make a very valid point about those major grain distilleries being there so the actual volume coming out of the lowlands is the highest that's a really really interesting point right 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 but what i've I- been read sorry so one of the distilleries in lowland is is this uh, distillery called the cameron brick which is actually a a grain distillery based in lowland region mm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you know talking about the lowlands again so i've been to edinburgh a couple of times uh, one of my favorite cities in the world you know it's it's at perfect size and it's very walkable uh, now it has a few distilleries as well uh, and obviously all the whiskey around right you can't beat it uh, but i believe that glenkinchy is called the edinburgh malt could now could right. you just now give us a little bit of history on uh, glenkinchy and how did it become the edinburgh malt so actually you know if you're in edinburgh and if you ask anyone where is the glenkinchy distillery they will give you a answer in in one second saying that it is 15 miles from the city and that is why it is called the edinburgh malt a lot of people will also tell you that for the for the uh, edinburgh polite society the the glenkinchy works really well because it is light grassy and a very floral kind of whiskies now anybody who actually lands into edinburgh his first whiskey distillery that he normally goes is actually glenkinchy because that's near its closest and historically has a great value into it and glenkinchy it was established in year 5 but back then it was not known as glenkinchy it was actually known as the milton distillery because mm-hmm. there was a, 
there was a guy called the uh, Jock Cockburn. He said that this whole land is known as the uh, the Garden of Scotland. And what he also mentioned was when he was building that whole whole city, he actually had a brewery, actually had a distillery, and and has a small market. And that whole ladder was actually called the Milton. And then then later the distillery was rebuilt and was actually called as Glen Kinchy because Kinchy was also the little little water bird which which was part of that Glen. Which from the way the water used to come, and also Kinchis was also the family who had the hair about lands nearby the distillery, and so it's what it was called Glen Kinchi. Okay, okay, interesting. So uh, you know, one thing that I keep kicking myself uh, all the time is having been to Edinburgh, uh, and the distillery is just a few miles away. I didn't actually go, uh, and I believe there's actually a bus that takes you from the heart of the city to the distillery. So next time I'm definitely going, but uh, just for a viewer's sake, could you tell us what the distillery experience is like and why we must go there? So, so it's the it's like I am keep repeating that you know there is a history that goes for Lowlands and Glen Kinchy, and it is quite evident when you are in the distillery, you will see that whole you know historical cultures is part of that you know whole whole distillery because now you have a very new building which is a red brick building. Mm -hmm. You also have. Uh, you know uh, the accommodation for the people working in the distillery, and also this this distillery has a museum. So a lot of people actually goes to Glen Ginchy to see that museum, where you can like actually you know see the process how whiskey is actually made in Scotland. So from your milling, from your uh, you know killing, from uh, the 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 copper wax, copper wax, the wash packs, every single process that goes into making of making of Scotch whiskey, you can actually experience. At the Glen Kinchy Museum, right at the distillery. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing you can taste all the expressions of the Diageo malts as well there. Right. Yes, you you can mm -hmm. you you can also taste them uh, because Glen Kinchy also does something called the Glen Kinchy Distillation, uh, which is I think a quite 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 an amazing whiskey. I had an opportunity to taste it while I was there. So people have have opportunity to taste this amazing single malt. Coming from the distillery, which is very limited. Gotcha. We're talking about the distillery edition and the distillers' editions also. Uh, so Glen Kinsey was one of the first Diageo classic malts, right? Uh, right. So obviously it uh, plays the role of the lowland malt. But in terms of flavor, in terms of the profile, where do you think it fits within the classic malts range? So Glen Kinsey, to be very honest, is a very light. Light, uh, very, a very lighter style of you know whiskey. So when you when you have Glen Kinchy on your nose, it's typically very light, very very grassy, quite floral. And I think it's a perfect whiskey for anybody who is beginner of drinking single malts and mm. quite an introduction to having a single malt, which is a very aperitive style. So even if you're not drinking whiskey in the early evening and you want to have a dram, little VP dram of of a very lighter style whiskey, I think Glen Kinchy fits as an Aperitif malt. Okay, but that's something to think about, guys. Uh, it's kind of a starter whiskey, both as a, a newbie to whiskey as well as a starter for the evening. Maybe a little chilled should be delicious. I mean, I personally like uh, drinking it early in the evening. Uh, right. But talking about you know the range, just to close out, I know that you work with uh, all the uh, Diageo whiskies in India, be it blends and uh, the single malts. And following you on Instagram, I see you know that you come up with all these innovative cocktails. We talked about it as well. So could you just leave us with a few cocktail ideas and anything innovative that you've come up with lately? Yeah, more than I, I think Brandon Bass is making cocktail. There are blenders who normally does cocktails in their blending house. And one of the examples that I would like to share with you here is, is the combination of these two amazing whiskeys, which is Glen Kinchy and Cameron Brick. And you get something which is very interesting these days in the market. It's called Johnny Walker uh, Origin Series, which is a Roland edition. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, this, this amazing whiskey is actually a blend of whiskeys coming specifically from the lowland region. So I think it's, it's anyways it's a cocktail in that, that whole bottle. But but having said that, people would still would like, like to have you know single balls or grain whiskies or Johnny Walker Lowland edition in a very different way. So you might have something like a nice green apple kind of highball where you have a little bit of green apple puree with Johnny Walker uh, black label Lowland edition with some egg white and some lime juice shaken all together and having a nice whiskey sour which is made with 
with this lighter style of whiskey. So, so cocktails is is quite an interesting way, you know, to experience all these whiskeys. For example, a lot of people these days like their old fashioned to be slightly more strong, slightly to have a bit of smoky touch to it. And talisker as as a malt as a base actually works really well. So talisker with some bitters, ice, and sugar, maybe maybe maple syrup works really well when you when you stir it with ice. So quite an interesting whiskey. So another another combination I would like to tell you here is is something called the uh, smoky coke, uh, which is quite mm -hmm. popular uh, in Scotland, which has lagavulin and coke. Uh, quite unusual. A lot of people might debut by having whiskey and coke, and especially lagavulin, 16 years in coke. But that that's quite recommended by Dave Bloom. So so lagavulin and coke, smoky coke. So so any concoction that you know you love it because. Uh, I learned personally from one of my whiskey guru was that the rule to drink whiskey is that there is no rule. Uh, you can drink it the way. And I think cocktails really uplift the flavor of the base of those whiskeys and can actually bring bring all these flavors up. So that's that's a great joint. That's a great uh, parting thought because it's something that I keep uh, telling people as well. In fact, one of the most bizarre things uh, that I've had lately was uh, this was completely by accident. But it was Lagavulin and coconut water. Poured it oh. by accident thinking it was regular water. And it just kind of electrified the whiskey. It's absolutely beautiful. You should give it a shot sometime. Nice and yeah, chilled I coconut actually, water actually, with some Lagavulin. I, yeah, I actually make a highball using Johnny Walker Black Label, which has Johnny Walker Black Label. I normally call this as tropical highball, which is Black Label, pineapple juice, coconut syrup, and top it up with again coconut water. Quite a refreshing one, and I actually mm -hmm. got from somebody. A lot of people in Brazil normally drink black label this way, so quite interesting. But I am definitely going to try whiskey and coconut water. Wonderful. So Ajay, this has been absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. So guys, if you want to get in touch with Ajay and learn about these really interesting cocktail combinations as well, I'm just going to be putting his details down in the description below. And I'll also put the link to uh, malts.com where uh, you can learn all about the Diageo malt portfolio. Uh, but until then, Ajay, any last thoughts for our viewers? Uh Enjoy the whiskey the way you would like to. Uh, Diageo is some great portfolio, and we actually call this as portfolio for everyone. Uh, if you want to have a lighter style whiskey, it's, it's actually part of the portfolio. You want to have the stronger ones, which is which is Talisker, Curly Line, Lagavulin. Please do it. Uh, drink responsibly. That's the most important thing that we always tell to our viewers. And and thank you so much, Uday, for bringing this Glen Kinch edition to your whiskey advisor. Thank thank you so much, Ajay. Pleasure was ours. Slanja. Cheers, cheers. Slanjiva. Slanjiva. So wonderful guys, that was a really lovely quick short session with Ajay. It's great to have him on the show and I'm really going to try out some of those cocktails guys. So until next week, please like, subscribe and hit that little bell. So you'll know every time we have a new video in the series. Cheers. Yes.